Hey everybody, it's Derek Kilmartin from CodeOpinion.com. Have you ever been in a code base and wondered why something is the way it is? Maybe you're looking at the code and see that there's a framework or library or pattern being applied and you do not understand why. So you go ask a teammate if they understand why and they have no clue either. Here's a way how you can create a log that defines all the significant architectural decisions that were made in the context around them. Your future self will thank you. So there's generally two phases that I personally go through when looking at a code base where I'm curious if I see something. Like I said, maybe it could be a library, a framework, a pattern, how something's modeled. My first inclination always to think, well, I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. This is all new to me. I don't quite understand all of it. So it must be correct. I kind of give the benefit of the doubt to the original author, even though I have no idea really how that decision was made. And then as time goes on, I start thinking, well, who in the heck wrote this? Like, why did they do this? This is terrible and I'm just gonna change it. But once I come to my senses, I really, the question that I wanna ask is why? Like, why is the code the way it is? If I decide just to accept it, that's just kind of accepting the status quo. And the reality of it is context may have changed and that's why I do believe that it no longer fits. But if I don't understand the context of how that decision was made in the first place and just randomly decide to change it, that doesn't work either. So you need to understand why a decision was made, when it was made, and under what circumstances. What was the context? So to me, there's kind of two things that need to be addressed, which is institutional knowledge, where you have a team that's making decisions in the past and again, context may have changed because software evolves, things change, the domain change, kind of the problem space may change slightly, your understanding may be better now through different insights that how you try to solve that problem before, you may have a better idea now and how actually to solve it. So, and people move, like people move different departments, different companies, and people that were making decisions based off how they understood something at a particular time, like I said, you can't just go ask a colleague because maybe nobody is left that even made decisions to begin with. So to me, the biggest important factor, not necessarily just the reason why, is I wanna know the context around the reason why. What was the situation at a particular time? Because then if I'm looking at current day, and does that decision still hold up? Maybe there's a lot of insight I can gain from what the context was maybe two years ago when a decision was made versus now and whether it still applies. So to me, that's the biggest thing is understanding context about when a decision was actually made, why it was made obviously, but what was the context around it? So how do we do that? So Michael Nygaard wrote a blog post pretty much 10 years ago about documenting architecture decisions. And basically the, the format explaining the reasons why, but as well as the format of what you want to record, he to kind of defined a title, a context, what the decision is, and specifically about the decision, which I think is great, is just start it with what the decision is, then elaborate from there, as well as the status, whether it's kind of going through a life cycle of whether it's proposed, accepted, and then the consequences, because everything has trade-offs. If you're making a decision, what are the consequences? positive and negative. So you can create these simple lightweight markdown files that are called ADRs, architectural decision records, that kind of are in the format of this template that Michael described. You keep these along with your code in your repository. And as you're making these decisions, create these files. Again, they are pretty much immutable and then it is gonna be an append only log of new files. And yes, you may mutate them a little bit to maybe fix typos or what the actual status is if it changes. But the idea here is that you're gonna have a log that you can refer to later about why a particular decision was made. And the key here, like I said, is the context. Understanding the context about why that decision was made. It can be as simple as just creating these files and managing them manually. But there is the availability to use something like ADR tools, which are just shell scripts that you can use to basically create, supersede, and kind of manage the actual markdown files of your ADRs in your repo. So what that looks like is in the console, I'm in the directory for one of the sample applications I use in some of my videos. So if I do ADR in it, what this will do is create a folder called docs, and then inside that, it's creating a folder called ADR, and then creating the first one, which is 001 record architecture decisions.md. If I jump over here, I can look at what this file looks like. And it's basically using Michael Nygaard's template of the status, context, decision, and consequences. 
So what I'm gonna do is actually create an ADR myself and fill it out. And it's actually related to a video that I'm gonna be doing soon about using messaging libraries and why you would wanna use one over say using the SDK directly of a message broker. So I'm gonna do ADR new use messaging library. All right. So what I've done is I've opened up 002 that the ADR tools created for me. I've kind of deleted everything else uh, out and just put in my context, which is when you start using messaging, you're gonna start applying certain patterns. Seemingly everybody ultimately realizes they need these, which is things like the outbox pattern, item potent consumers, a process manager, retries. These are all kinds of patterns that you ultimately will implement and you need to implement them if you're only using the SDK of the message broker. So let's say that you're using something like RabbitMQ. It doesn't come out of the box with applying these patterns. You ultimately have to implement that. However, messaging libraries in the .NET space like Brighter or End Service Bus or Mass Transit generally provide implementations and ways that you can use these patterns already and the abstract, the underlying transport of that broker. So I that's why I generally say that I prefer to use a messaging library because you're likely gonna have to implement these patterns. So that's our context, is that we need to implement a certain number of messaging patterns and we need to figure out whether we should do it ourselves or use an existing third party. Our decision is use a third party messaging library that implements all our required patterns instead of implementing these patterns ourselves, which would ultimately mean that we'd be end up creating our own messaging library. So we're gonna leverage a third party library. And then lastly, the consequences, which are good or bad, some of the good is that because most messaging libraries abstract the underlying transport, that means that we could actually change the transport that we're using. Similar to, for example, if you're using an ORM and you wanna change the actual database provider underneath, Although you can do that and it's not completely trivial, it is an option. So it'd be less costly if we wanted to change the underlying transport. The other kind of benefit that it provides is because we don't have this implemented various times in different places because we're using this library, we're gonna be having a consistent way of impl implementing these uh, patterns. So for example, if we're using the outbox pattern, it's gonna be the exact same on how we're using that everywhere because we're using the same library. And kind of one of the downsides with any dependency really that you're taking on that's third party is kind of keeping up with those major changes that are breaking changes and what that release cadence is. Now, because we're depending on something, do we want to keep up to date with that third party dependency and how quickly it's kind of revving its major uh, changes? And if they're breaking, we got to have to deal with that. So with anything, context matters. Your context matters. This is just a template. This is Michael Nygaard's template. There's other templates out there, but the idea, the foundation of the idea is keeping a log of your architectural decisions so that other people later on, including yourself, even if you made the decision yourself, can go back in time and read through the log to understand how you got to where you are. Things may have changed, the context may have changed, Decisions may no longer make sense. Maybe it makes sense to actually change what that decision is and, and move to something different or change how something's modeled. But again, be pragmatic. Do not be dogmatic about this and say, oh, this is the template. This is how I have to fill it out. Find out what works for you. Understand how you want to write this. I think a big key to this and to ADRs is, again, like I mentioned, it's context, but write it in a way that your future self or somebody else will thank you because again, it's just a log. Do not think of this as documentation because documentation, the, the, I think the reason why most people have such issues with it is it getting stale and out of date from what the code is. Again, this is point in time about when you made a decision. So realize it's very different from that, it's a log. So again, be pragmatic, um, understand why you're writing it and provide enough information, just enough information. It doesn't have to be some big long essay, but under, provide the context, the reasons why, so that your future self and other people will thank you when, again, at the very beginning, when you're looking at a code base and you're understanding why, was, why is that the way it is? Now you actually have a place to go uh, look for it rather than assuming and hoping somebody else or another teammate understands why the decision was made. Now you have concrete reason in the log to understand the context and why that decision was made. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. 
If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.